Hello and welcome to another segment of Tech Talk with me, Debbie, and my husband, Laverne Dietzel. This is our October segment and we have, it's been a little more than a month since uh, we've done our first show, but here we are again recording it one more time. And today's topic is going to be about speeding up your PC. And I can tell you from experience that many of the clients that come to our computer shop are often bemoaning the fact that, uh, that their computer is very slow, that they're waiting for it, it's, it's not uh, working on different programs and such. So today Laverne is going to go over various things about um, looking at your resources on your computer, ways to clean it up, ways to speed it up, um, different kinds of cleaning programs. Um, he'll also go through a segment that is specifically for those of you who, who want the in-depth technology. And we'll, have our, um, we'll be fielding a question in our mailbag segment. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Laverne now so that he can tell you a little bit about speeding up your PC. Thank you. Um, when you time comes to your PC, there are reasons for it to be slow. Normally, you get a PC and it's pretty fast out of the store, partly because it's a newer computer than you had before, and your old one was probably a lot slower, a lot less powerful. Well, there are four things that you can do, or four reasons for the system to be slow. First of all, the system can be slow because it doesn't have enough resources, in particular, the RAM. Now, that's the memory of the computer. That's the area it's like like workspace it had the, in which it does its, all its work. If you don't have enough of that, it will be slow. It might be slow because it's just the CPU, the thing that runs the whole thing, is just not fast enough for the things you want to do. Some things like email don't take very much, a very powerful CPU. Some things like graphics, editing graphics, editing music, they take a more powerful CPU. Maybe you just don't have a powerful enough computer. Third, your video. The video in most PCs, laptops or desktops, is shared with the processor, the CPU. And what that means is the memory that the video uses to draw the pictures before they can put them onto your screen, that memory is taken from the pool of memory that you have and the work of drawing the picture is done by the CPU. Videos, on the other hand, that, uh, that are powerful, computers that are powerful, have a separate video card with its own GPU, graphics processing unit. And then also, they have their own RAM. They will be up a third to 50% faster than the onboard video. So there's the video that's on a separate card, separate video with its own graphical processing unit and its RAM. And then there's the video that shares memory and the CPU does all the work. Fourthly, um, you, cannot have an, you might not have enough what's called virtual memory. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, a second reason, though, uh, besides being stopped for re resources, is failing hardware. Sometimes hard drives start to die, and the first sign of a hard drive dying is it flashes a lot, it's light a lot, and has a hard time reading. And that'll slow things down greatly. And finally, the third thing is you might just have an old machine. As machines get older, the circuits get slower. They get slower because of the heat, starts to break down their ability to make connections and stuff, and they just slow down. How do you measure your system performance? What's acceptable? Obviously, it's a personal question and one that you have to answer for yourself. But in general, when we look, work on a computer, we consider it fast enough if it takes two to three minutes at most to go from turning it on to ready to use, the boot time. Okay, two to three minutes. Second, um, if it's uh, if you've got you're playing video and they're stuttering and they're stopping and, and, and sound is dropping in and coming out, then you're probably your PC is too slow to run video. In addition, you might have a slow internet. Now that could be the internet connection, but a lot of times, if uh, your internet is taking forever to load pages, it might just be because your your system can't handle the information that's coming in fast enough. And finally, if you're playing games and you're getting killed a lot, that's definitely a reason. It's probably because you have a slow PC. 
How do you speed these things up? First of all, you clean it out. How do you clean it out? Number one way to do, and we'll show you here just as soon as this gets off of preparing to stand by. There, oh great, went to standby mode. If you have a PC that goes into standby mode, you probably should turn it off because otherwise you'll get uh, in the situation I am right now where I have to reboot. Ah, there we are, it came back. All right, one of the first things you can do to make your PC faster is turn off everything that's not being used. To do that, you go to the start button, you go to run. Okay, this is, works for XP, Vista, or Windows 7. In run, you type M-S-C-O-N-F-I-G. Press enter. This will bring up a box. This is your system configuration utility. As you can see on the screen, there's a number of tabs at the top. You start with the one almost to the right that says Startup. These are all the programs that are starting in the background. When they start in the background, they take up system resource called RAM or memory. Memory is like this. If you have a workspace, it's a counter you're working on, and you put on that counter all the tools that you need and all the parts that you need and everything, you can have a very small space to work. Okay, it can be very crowded. And when it's very crowded like that, things don't work well. On the other hand, if you have a large workspace and you have your tools and stuff out, you can get a lot more done. Workspace is your RAM. If you don't have enough of it, what the system has to do is they have to take part of what you're working on, set it over into a cupboard, that's your hard drive, and then come back and do some work and then go get the parts that they need out of the cupboard. That cupboard is your hard drive. That's storage. It takes 20 times longer to get that information from that cupboard to your workplace than it does if it's right on the workplace. So every time you have to do that, you have to take 20 times longer to get that information. It really slows things down. Now, if the cupboards are too small, then it's a real mess. And that's called, another name for that cupboard is virtual memory. So you have to increase that virtual memory. So these programs are rolled in memory. They're taking your workspace away. A lot of them are not needed. How do you know? The best way is just to click on this button that says disable all. See, they're all unchecked. Now, when we reboot the system, those will not start up. We click on apply. But there's another set that you need to look at, and that's under services. Okay, click on services. You want to hide the Microsoft services. So click on that little button down there that says hide all Microsoft services. And then again, you click on disable all. Once you've done that, you can close. Okay. You'll probably get this error, but you can ignore it because it doesn't really mean anything. Now, you can, I'm going to exit without a restart because I really don't want to go through the hassle of restarting and sitting here looking at the camera and waiting. But if I did, what this, those, that simple method would do would probably increase the uh, speed of the computer by about 30%. However, the downside is, is I now just turned off the antivirus and a bunch of other things that I do need. So once I reboot, what I need to do is go back in again, go to my all pro, I'll go to run, excuse me, type in msconfig, notice it's already there because we just typed in it a minute ago, bring it up, and this time go through and turn things that I need back on. How do I know what I need? If you look at this command here, under the command right here, you'll see what the programs are that are being loaded. Together with that, and this list over here under startup item, you can kind of guess what might be needed. The only things we like to see turned on are your antivirus. Everything else is pretty much unneeded. In this case, this person's using McAfee and those are the two McAfee. If you, if you find you turn things on, off rather, that you find later on you need, you can always come back and turn it back on. And that's nice. Now that's going to speed up your machine. Once you get done with that, it'll probably speed up your machine about 20% with that simple thing. Second thing you can do to get your machine clean is get rid of spyware and junkware. Junkware is anything, any program you didn't ask for, but you ended up with anyway. Uh, junkware are toolbars you didn't ask for. 
um, weather channels, um, anti anti this and anti that programs, things that you got as uh, that, that as you downloaded things that you did need. For instance, most people need Adobe Acrobat Reader that reads PDF files. One of the things that it does is install Google Toolbar or Bing Toolbar, depending on which flavor of the month they're using. You don't need any of those toolbars. Toolbars do only one thing. They give you a shortcut to something you can do in your browser. You're an Internet Explorer and you want to open something a little faster, you'll use a toolbar to do it. But the amount of space and screen space they take doesn't make them useful and it slows down your computer. So I get rid of all the toolbars. You can always add them back if you need to. I get rid of all the things you do. How do you do that? Again, you go to Start. You go to the Control Panel. And it'll take a few seconds to load there. And if it's in this program, it's Add Remove Programs, because this is XP. If you have Vista or you have Windows 7, it'll be called Programs and Features. And eventually, they'll give you a list of all the programs that you have loaded. You can scroll through there, and any program that you do no, no longer use or have never used, you could probably remove. There are several in here that might get, get be able. For instance, here's MSN. MSN is a special uh, version of a browser. It allows you to go on the internet, but it doesn't do anything more than Internet Explorer. It just takes up space and sometimes memory. You can remove that just by clicking on the Remove button and so on and so forth. You work your way through. Here's one, shop for HP supplies. Do you know what that is? That's an advertisement. Advertising you to go to HP to buy their inks at usually a lot higher price than you can get locally. So I'd remove that and so on and so forth. You work your way through it. That, those permanently remove those programs. So you've got two things you can do. You can turn off programs in the background and you can remove programs that you don't use. The junkware. Sadly, most programs come from the, from the store full of junkware. Uh, one of the major best, uh, one of the major best, I mean, uh, big box places, I won't mention Best Buy, charges $99 to clean the laptop before you take it home. I'm always wondering why in the world they would have to do that. It should be optimized before you, when you buy it. But no, there's lots of junkware in there and they charge you to remove it. So uh, that's always a good idea to remove all that stuff. So those are some of the things you can do to clean your computer and to turn off the things in the background that you don't need. That will increase your system performance between 20 and 30 percent. Yeah, before we start on the mailbag segment, um, I was wondering, when it comes to viruses, adware, and other kind of junkware, can Macs get those kind of uh, bad programs as well as PCs? Well, fortunately for us, to a lot lesser degree. They can get them, but it's like most of the people who are writing those kind of programs are aiming at the biggest market. And the biggest market is PCs. It'd be 90% of the market. So you don't see too much aimed at Apple. Although the last major virus outbreak about three years ago was 60% of the people who got the virus were Apple owners. Because most most Apple owners think that they're immune to viruses. They don't buy the virus so antivirus software. As for spyware, many Macs today run a Windows emulator. And that Windows emulator will become infected with spyware like any other Windows program. Because again, it's a target. So that Windows emulator is very good, by the way. I think that most of the ones that it uses, uh, that Apple uses, is a very good thing. You can run a lot of Windows programs. So if you own an Apple, don't be afraid of Windows programs, but be do aware that you probably need anti-spyware and antivirus, just like a PC. All right. Well, thanks for that answer. I thought we'd get a little extra uh, two-for-one uh, yeah, two question for one. Yeah, two during for our mailbag like segment.